Let them succeed or fail on their own. Government involvement is necessary. The next one, government involvement is necessary where private industry can't do the job all by itself, such as in agriculture. Wow, we've always been the breadbasket. Now we've been passed by, I'm trying to remember what country has passed us as the world's breadbasket. We're no longer the, industri the uh, agricultural center for the world. And the last one is corporate welfare should be eliminated for big business, but the social safety net for individuals should be retained. Did anybody go for this one? I love this audience. <laughs> Next, we go to health care. Health care regulation is the main cause of rising costs. Regulation has denied people of treatments, resources, and made the cost of creating new treatments out of control. The government should stay out. This week, everybody's been talking about uh, health care. Anybody who talks to their doctor just about all the paperwork and the regulation. I mean, I love the, I love the problem with, um, you know, people say that uh, uh, costs are just out of control. You know who sets the cost? Everything is a percentage according to Medicaid. The government sets the original costs. The next one, health care costs are rising due to lawsuits and caps on suits should be in place. Reduced regulation would save money. The rising cost of health care is mostly the fault of big government and lobbyists. Who said this? Who did this one? Yeah, a lot of people. Judge, I have a, an attorney who works for me. He's one of my chief researchers, and he's worked at the Supreme Court, clerk for the Supreme Court and everything else, and we argue on this one all the time. I say it's you damn attorneys. And he says, oh, you got, you, uh, what, somebody cuts off your feet, you don't want to sue them? Stop with the cutting off of the feet. <laughs> Make the argument here that attorneys aren't a big part of the problem. You'll notice when we're talking about health care reform, I haven't heard a peep out of a single attorney. They're all like, shh, no, they're not looking at us. Be quiet, shh. There, There's a little bit of a nuance with respect to uh, tort reform. 99% of lawsuits against doctors and health care providers are in state court systems. The states are sovereign. They run their own court systems. The Congress cannot tell New Jersey or Texas or Utah or Maine or Florida how to run their court systems. The states can reform themselves from within, like Texas and Mississippi did. They used to be the most desirable places for the plaintiff's lawyers to go. They're now the least right. desirable. That change has to come from within, otherwise we trample the rights of the states. Okay, good. Um, let's see, government should make health care universally accessible. Is, is, is health care not universally acceptable? Yes. Uh, uh, accessible? I mean, yes. James, can you walk into a hospital without even identification? James, will they help you out? Absolutely. Yeah. You, it, it doesn't matter. You, I'm having a, heart, a really, really expensive, involved heart condition. <laughs> and they will take care of you. Absolutely. We, have, we, we don't have the right to refuse. We have to. Are you in the health care yeah, industry? I'm an ER nurse. Okay. Um, and the last one is private enterprise falls, uh, fails to deliver health care to all. Government should fix the problem. Okay. <laughs> Government is the problem. And here's the, uh, the next category. Taxes, spending, and the debt. There should be no limits placed on the ability of government to raise sufficient revenue to do all the jobs government should be doing. You know, let me go back to, uh, Judge, make this case here. Corporate welfare, let's see, uh, there was one here. Uh, government involvement is necessary. A private industry cannot do the job all by itself. They use agriculture in this. What about defense? Well, the, the, government, the government buys defense items from the defense industry because it needs those items with which to defend the property. The government doesn't produce anything. The government just consumes. But there are certain legitimate items that the government has to buy. The police have to have what they need, and the soldiers and sailors have to have what they need. But it's not subsidizing an industry, giving it money not to produce. That's what the agricultural subsidies right. are. Help me out with this. There should be no limits placed on the ability of government to raise sufficient revenue to do all the jobs government should be doing. I guess the key here is the jobs they should be doing. Correct. And, and there also must be a limit on what government can take from us. At some point, taxation becomes theft. I want to, um, I, I want to, I want to go here when we come back. Tea parties, uh, people say the people who go to tea parties are anti-government. I want to, I want to pick it up there. Anti-government. Next.
We were, um, we were just talking uh, when we were in the break that I'm convinced we have a way out of our mess, uh, but we have to understand our mess, and we also have to understand our role in it, and we have to know who we are and then be consistent in our life and stand up for the popular or unpopular things, no matter how uncomfortable it is, you've got to stand up for what you believe in. How many here are anti-government? I've been seeing lately in the press that the Tea Party movement and people who are um, saying lower taxes, lower spending, are just anti-government. Can anybody tell me the difference between anti-government and pro-very limited government? Anybody want to take that on? Anti-government and where you are. Yes, Matthew. Well, uh, anti-government is is anarchy basically, and that's just that's destruction. Um, pro very limited government is doing exactly what the Constitution laid out for the federal government to do. Right. So, you, and in each state, if if the federal government, for instance, not a lot of people know this, it's fascinating. Read a life, uh, Samuel Adams. It's a great book. And he was a big uh, religious guy. He influenced the Constitution uh, with uh, John Hancock. I'm thinking the big signature guy. John Hancock up in uh, Massachusetts. If you read that Constitution, did they not have a state religion in Massachusetts? Yes, they did. A, but wait a minute. How did they have a state religion? Because there was no... Uh, there was no federal objection to a state religion the constitution banned a national religion yes so if you want to be progressive in california be progressive you want to have that big huge lumbering giant do it it doesn't matter but give us some space where we can have free freedom limited government it is the difference between look i don't think the people in california object to texans well they do of course they do but i mean object to them having limited government texans think californians are crazy crazy californians think that texans are crazy but that's the way our federal government was set up let everybody be themselves so America. that as reagan said you can vote with your feet exactly right if this fails if california fails they can always move to texas if Texas fails, they can move to Kansas. If America fails, where does the world go? Back in just a sec. I invite you to take this test on who you are. Are you liberal, conservative, libertarian, progressive? Who are you? Know it and then examine everything in your life and make sure it fits your philosophy into one philosophy. Um, there's only one question on this test and you can take it at glenbeck.com. There's only one question that was unanimous in this room, and it makes me happy. It's on taxes, spending, and the debt. It gives me hope, because I really, truly believe Americans will do the tough thing. This, this is not a pretty future for America, at least in the, the turnover. Here it is. Cut taxes and government spending by 50% or more, which will positively impact the economy. The national debt must be paid down rather than endlessly increased. Let me ask you this. How many of you, the word positively impact the economy, how many understand that we turn the valves off and the world changes? How many understand that we are talking in a flip over? You're talking about a reset of the system. They're propping it up now bogusly. Are you willing to live like our grandparents did in the Great Depression? Re really think of this before you raise your hand. Live like our grandparents did to be able to pass freedom to your children. If you are, raise your hand. I, I think America is changing and I don't think the politicians understand that I don't think they have the spine to come to you and say guys it's unsustainable the whole thing is unsustainable the secret here cut taxes if you went to a significant global um, or, or a significant um, tax rate I mean I don't mean one that's crazy cutting you'd have all the money from the rest of the world because the rest of the world is on fire Reference Wednesday show if you still have it on TiVo. This is the answer. It's going to be a tough one, but I believe most Americans will do it. Back in just a second.